Hello folks, Fuzz here, welcome back to some more Nino Kuni 2 side quest action. And today we're going to be taking on two side quests which are kind of linked together so we have to do them in this particular order. However, the second of the two is going to be a little bit annoying for some of you, it was for me. And I'm going to talk about that uh, more as we get to it. But for now we're going to go ahead and make our way to Midtown in order to pick up quest number 106 which is the world's best buyer. And in order to complete this quest, you are going to have to make sure you have 5,000 guilders. That shouldn't be a big problem. I'm doing this in chapter 8. You can do this from chapter 7 though. I've got 540 plus 1,000 guilders, so I think I've got enough. And we're looking for a quest giver known as uh, the Cafe Regular. Okay, and it's this ginge that we want to speak to right here. This is the Cafe Regular, so we'll go ahead and accept the quest from him. And his quest is going to have us travel around a little bit, especially over to Capstan upon Hull, which is going to be uh, perhaps the first thing we're going to have to do once we've spoken to the robot after speaking to this guy. So let's just go ahead and accept this, having gone through the dialogue. I don't want to speed through the dialogue too quickly, so you guys can pause if you want to read it. Uh, but I'm sure most of you are watching this in terms of a step-by-step -step guide, so you can read this in your own game as well. But people do moan at me when I read through too fast. So it is hard to find that balance sometimes. But there we go. The quest has been accepted. And all business sense. I actually need that for some research in my kingdom. So I'm looking forward to completing this quest actually. Uh, right, next up then we need to look for Morgan. And I believe he's around this area somewhere. Yes, so just on the other side. We're going to make our way over to him now. And here we go, speak to this fella right here. Excuse me. Bada 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 bum, yep, yeah, okay. Thank you. So we are gonna have to head over to Capson upon Hull next, which means we can just teleport over there. And just go to the town entrance by the looks of things. And the person we're looking for is Morgan. So Morgan is going to be located just in this town, which isn't a big town as you guys know. So it shouldn't take us too long to find them. And we're just over on the western northernly area of the town. <laughs> Right, so we need to purchase a particular item from her in order to advance the quest. And the item we need to purchase is, is songbook number 24. Yeah. So we'll speak to her once more here, where she'll give us some um, uh, items for sale. And we just want to go right down to the bottom, songbook number 24. We'll go ahead and purchase that. And that's what we'll need to do in order to advance the quest here. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Excuse me. That's right, man. Hey. Right then, so next up we're going to teleport over to the world map area and I'm going to just go over to Auntie Martha's cottage, it looks like the closest location and then we'll fire up the uh, airship. So you have the airship from chapter 7 onwards which is why you can do this quest from that point. I mean obviously as well you need to complete the chapter where Broadleaf uh, is going to lock the side quests before you do it. 
which is chapter 6 I think so then yeah chapter 7 is when this becomes available and we're just going to whiz around here and just to the south of the quest objective on the mini map you'll see three trees and the little blue shiny item that you want to go ahead and loot just watch out to level 70 dragon patrolling this area as well and there's a chest I might as well go ahead and grab. I've got the trophy actually already for 200 treasure chests. But another song book to add to the collection. Never hurts or goes amiss. And then we're going to teleport back to Capstan upon Hull. And hopefully Morgan is going to be a little bit more prepared to join us now that we've gone ahead and collected the item she requested. So you'll find Morgan in the same location that we left her. And we can just hand the Sunderline straight in now that we've collected it. And that is the final thing we need to do for this quest, as I said. There's no more objectives to go ahead and meet. So we'll just get through the dialogue, and that will be the end of it. Hmm. Yes. And the Everyday General Store will now stock Sage's secrets as well. So a bit of a bonus there for us. There you go. There's the new items that will be available to purchase. Thank you. Hey. But now comes the fun part. The next quest, quest 117, which is called the Sweet Stink of Success, is either going to be very easy or really quite frustrating for you. So let's head back to the kingdom and see what we've got. Okay, so back in uh, Evermore, once you've assigned Morgan to a location, whatever facility that may be, you might have to just teleport straight back to Evermore Castle once more, even though you'll already be there, just so that she'll appear in the area. And then we can go ahead and engage with her in order to pick up the side quest in question. And the reason why this is going to be annoying is because of the item that we have to get for her. And the item is going to be a pair of shoes with stinky or smelly in the title. Now it doesn't matter which, stinky or smelly. You actually get a pair of these fairly early on in the game, but only one pair. And there's a good chance many of you, including myself, went ahead and sold that item at some point during the past few hours of the adventure. When just, you know, going through your items, selling them to vendors or whatever. Which means you need to hunt down another pair. And unfortunately, that's easier said than it is done. So what we need to do in order to get a pair, now if you haven't sold the previous pair, then by all means just hand this in. Your quest is done. It's literally that easy. It's really that simple. And that's why I said this quest is either going to be easy or frustrating. If you haven't got the pair of shoes that you need, the smelly or stinky shoes, then we're going to have to get them. And the best place to get them, the consensus, is the first dreamer's door in the grotto. So if I just open up the map, or I'll teleport over there in fact to show you where I'm talking about. Head over to Auntie Martha's cottage. And we're going to head into the grotto that's located just next to her cottage. So we can either fly over there, run over there, it doesn't matter which. For the sake of time I recommend flying of course. And land uh, just about here. And it's the grotty grotto that you want to head to. So it's a low levelish area. And the shoes themselves, the smelly or stinky shoes, are only a low level item. Which is one of the annoying things in farming for this. And we're just going to head up to the dreamer's door. And we're going to head into the grotty grotto maze. Now there's multiple places in here that you can find the shoes. But unfortunately, they're all quite rare. So you're going to have to be farming this place more than likely multiple times in order to get the item that you need. So the first thing I recommend is making sure on Tactic Tweaker, uh, under the Spoil settings, that you don't have rare equipment selected. Okay, and the reason for that, I'm going to turn that off look, is because the stinky and smelly shoes don't spawn as rare equipment. So it's important we don't have that active when farming for them. Now you can go ahead and quite simply kill the enemies. And what this is going to do is give, they're going to have a chance of actually dropping a treasure chest, which will be the stinky shoes. So just a normal grey treasure chest, not one of the blue or epic ones. And unfortunately nothing in that case. And also we're going to open the chest. I don't know about the blue chests, but I know for certain the red chests can drop them. 
And there's two more ways that we can go ahead and try and find the item. And that is, A, through a vendor. There's a doggy vendor that spawns. He's got like a dog's face. And he doesn't always spawn either. He, I went through about 12 mazes before I saw him. But if you do see him, then you're guaranteed that he's going to be carrying these smelly shoes. I'm certain of it. There is another vendor that spawns, by the way. That isn't the doggy vendor. And he doesn't sm uh, sell the smelly shoes. Or the stinky shoes. But the dog guy does. So when you see him, you know that your uh, little escapade is over. He's going to have the shoes for you. I was going to check this treasure chest over here. And the third, or the fourth rather, and final way of getting the shoes is that it can drop from the last boss in this particular Dreamer's Maze. So the last boss is always the heavy hitting dude that's probably a lot lower level than you are, so it's not going to be a big deal. Uh, I'll see if he's got it. If not, I'll just skip ahead to when I actually go ahead and grab this item, uh, which is actually something I've already done. So I'm speaking kind of in the past tense there, or future tense, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but this is more just an example to show you. So make sure you've got the tracking treasures on as well. Just so you can see where all the treasure chests are. Because you never know, the red treasure chest might contain it for you. But I'm not surprised by the fact that I've pretty much gone through the whole dungeon. And it hasn't dropped it for me anywhere. Or the vent didn't spawn. Because that's, like I say, probably going to be a few runs before you actually do see it. So nothing off the last boss either. Once you've gone ahead and cleared out the Dreamer's Door maze, all you need to do is run through to the final door. Make sure there's no more treasure chests uh, being tracked that you'll need to open first. And then you can leave and re-enter and hopefully have a bit more luck. Right, so I had literally been going in and out of these Dreamer Doors for about an hour here in the grotto. And I was just about ready to take a break and give up for a while before... Uh, deciding to go for one last attempt. So I started my usual routine of just breaking the things in order to get purple orbs because obviously we need those to open the blue chests and I don't like missing out on blue chests just in case, you know, I don't know if I'm missing out on the item or not that we want to get. Uh, but as I saw this blue chest then, I also noticed the doggy vendor had spawned right here on level one of the maze. So I went ahead and spoke to him and as I told you, once you find the doggy, you can actually go ahead and guarantee that the item will be available for purchase. So I bought three of them, even though we only need one. Why not? So now I have the stinky shoes. It's literally just a case of heading back yeah. to Morgan here. And we can just give her a pair. I purchased three for no particular reason. It was a long farm. So I wanted to get more than one. And that's it. We're done. The quest that has brought a lot of aggro to people, a lot of frustration, all comes down to just how lucky you are with either not having sold your pair of smelly shoes that we collected earlier in the game, or if you have, how long it takes you to farm for these stinky shoes uh, when you actually go and do so. And there we have it. Another quest down. Two more quests down, in fact. And we're well on our way to completing the side quests. For Nino Kuni too, so I hope this little guide has helped you folks. If it has, don't forget to support the video by leaving a like and come back and join me soon for more Nino Kuni 2 side quest content. See you then.